So we're just going to wait a few more moments. Hang tight because we have about another minute or two before it's noon time. Still here, just waiting one more minute. See if anybody else wants to pop on with us. Another 30 seconds or so. Don't want to miss this opportunity, do you? <laughs> I'm just going to make sure that my technology is working, everybody's working, everybody's happening. And we are. So, welcome, welcome. Hello, thank you for joining us today to discuss ways to hold your Girl Scout ceremonies and celebrating Girl Scout tradition. I'm Dee Dee, one of the four volunteer support specialists at Girl Scouts of the Green and White Mountains, where we serve girls and volunteers in the great states of Vermont and New Hampshire. If you can hear me, can you type where you are joining us from in the comments section? Amanda can hear me, so thank you, Amanda. I want to uh, make sure that you can <laughs> give us a like or a heart if you are enjoying the presentation, um, want to interact with you, if something resonates with you, let us know, dropping a comment. If there is a leader that you think should see this, be sure to share it. Well, I am sure that you will agree that trying to maintain a sense of normalcy is so important right now for you, your girls, and your own family. So how do we keep the Girl Scout spirit going strong when we can't actually meet in person? During this quick session, we'll introduce to you a few of the Girl Scout traditions and ceremonies and ways to hold a virtual ceremony. If you have held a virtual ceremony, let us know. We want to <laughs> see and hear your ideas too. Check out companies offering free or low-cost virtual video meetings or webinar services for your group. Try services from Google, Skype, Jitsu, Zoom, WebEx. Depending on the size of your troop, you might set up a virtual parent meeting or give caregivers a quick phone call or email about the upcoming ceremony and how they can help or maybe will not help. Whatever platform you use, remember to take, take a careful look at the privacy settings due to the increased volume use with online platforms for schools, groups, companies, families. Pranksters have been entering public rooms with inappropriate content. So it's a good idea to make sure that your meeting is set as private. Be sure to require a password, too, to enter the meeting. And if the option is available, do not allow anyone to enter the meeting room until you, the host, has arrived. This way you have more control over who is attending. All right, so let's get started. Ceremonies help Girl Scouts mark special events throughout the year, such as bridging to another level, earning a National Leadership Award, or receiving a Girl Scout pin. Ceremonies can commemorate accomplishments or add something special to the beginning or end of a group's meeting. Girls can plan a ceremony around a theme, such as, a, as, as friendship or nature, and express themselves in words or songs. Whatever its purpose, every Girl Scout ceremony helps girls share in Girl Scout history and traditions and create their own special memories. Let's start with an opening ceremony. Opening ceremonies are traditionally held at the start of a very special occasion or special event or to begin your troop meeting. Just as you were meeting with the girls in person, you can hold a virtual opening ceremony by showing the Girl Scout sign reciting the Girl Scout promise together. 
You can even assign a paper to one of the girls to start the opening ceremony and include the Pledge of Allegiance. If the girl who is assigned the caper doesn't have a U.S. flag at home, she can always display a picture of the U.S. flag or draw a flag if she wants. For your younger girls who are still learning the promise and law, you can email them the words ahead of time so that they can follow along. What are some other ways and ideas that you can think of for holding a virtual opening ceremony? An investiture and rededication ceremony. These ceremonies should be held at the start of every new membership year or if you are a new troop within four to six meetings. That gives the girls enough time to learn the Girl Scout promise. An investiture ceremony is held to welcome new members, girls and adults alike, into the Girl Scout family for the first time. Girls receive their Girl Scout, Girl Scout brownie, or Girl Scout daisy pin at this time. A rededication ceremony is an opportunity for girls and adults to renew their commitment to the Girl Scout Promise Law and the Sisterhood. You can go as elaborate as you want and decorate candles for each part of the Girl Scout Law, or as simple as you, as you can uh, with tea lights or a birthday candle. By just adding candles to the ceremony makes it that much more special for the girls. Just as you would for an opening ceremony, be sure each girl has the words to the promise and law. Begin by lighting one candle and reciting the Girl Scout promise together. Or you can light three candles to represent the three parts of the promise. If you will be including the Girl Scout law, you can use multiple candles for each part of the law. You can assign each girl a part and recite and they can recite as you light a candle or help, have the families help them light a candle and when it's their turn. They can use whatever candle they have in their home. If the girls will be lighting them, you want to be, uh, this would be a, a, one of those times where you would share the plans with the families ahead of time so that they can assist her and that we can be sure that she's staying safe. If your troop budget allows, you can always order candles online and have them mailed to each girl's home and in time for the ceremony, hopefully. If the girls will be receiving a pin, be sure to order them online and have the pins mailed directly to their home. Ask families to pin their girls one at a time and then follow with the candle lighting and reciting the promise and law. End with a virtual dance party to celebrate. <laughs> Some great songs that the younger girls like and most of them know are Happy, Cha Cha Slide, and the Cupid Shuffle. Do you have any ideas for holding a virtual investiture and rededication ceremony? Do you know that GSUSA is offering free shipping right now? So go ahead and order those recognitions. A Scout's Own is a girl plan program that lets girls explore and express their thoughts and feelings around a topic. It can be using the, a spoken word, favorite song, poetry, uh, or other forms of expression. It's never considered a religious ceremony. You have different parts to a Girl Scout zone. You have a theme. Have the girls decide on the theme. Some ideas can include friendship, sisterhood, beauty of nature, the life of Juliet Lowe, the first day of spring, senior citizens, the spirit of a special day, citizenship, service, or the world of tomorrow. I'm sure the girls would have a list of themes that they could come up with too. And then you have the place. Traditionally, a scout zone takes place outside and everyone walks quietly to a chosen spot. For a virtual scout zone, it should take place wherever the girls are comfortable and perhaps that is in front of their screen. And there's a form of expression. After choosing the theme, have the girls make a list of different ways they can tell or show their theme. Examples like songs, poems, or choral rendition, a story, a legend, thoughts about what the theme means to her, and spoken by each Girl Scout. From the list, have them choose one idea to open the Scout Zone. Decide who will start the Scout Zone and allow each girl to have her full time to share or express herself. Another idea is to have each girl write or draw her thoughts or feelings on paper and hold her sign up. Have you seen the collage of signs? 
or each girl can be given a single word to turn into an art project and then put in order to spell out something meaningful for your troop. Take a picture of the collage to commemorate the moment. Conclusion or ending. Traditionally, everyone walks away silently. For a virtual ending, you could ask the girls to quietly leave the virtual meeting. Let them know ahead of time that everyone will just leave the meeting once everyone has expressed themselves and you will see them again at your next virtual meeting. A fly up is when Girl Scout brownies bridge to Girl Scout juniors. Girls receive the Girl Scout pins along with the brownie wings. Years ago, brownie leaders used to be called brownie owls. When Brownie Girl Scouts moved up to the next level, their Brownie Owl, the leader, would give them one of their feathers so that they could fly up. <laughs> brownie wings were first used as a symbol of bridging in 1927, and they're still a sign of brownies bridging to this day. Typically, you would incorporate uh, presenting the wings into a court of awards or a bridging ceremony, which we'll get to next. Any Girl Scout who was a brownie can wear the wings. They can transfer their wings each time they bridge to the next level, or if they want to keep their uniforms intact, they can purchase a new one. The wings can also be ordered online and mailed directly to the girls' homes. Ask the families to assist with presenting them with their wings when the presentation begins. Be sure to share all of the plans with the families ahead of time so that they are prepared and can assist you. Court of Awards is a special ceremony recognizing girls' accomplishments. Girls are presented with their badges, ear pins, and other recognitions earned during the year. Volunteers may also be recognized during the ceremony. The Court of Awards can be held at any time during the year, at any location, and as often as the troop wants. You can order the girls' recognitions and pins online and have them shipped directly to the girls' homes. Remember to talk to the families ahead of time to invite them to the ceremony and to ask for their assistance. Be sure to work with the girls to create the plans for their court of awards. There are parts of a ceremony, very simple. You have your call to order. You will want to welcome everyone and let them know that the ceremony is about to begin. You have your opening. Typically, you would have an opening ceremony, which could include the reciting of the Girl Scout Promise and the Pledge of Allegiance. Remember, you can assign that task to one of the girls to lead everyone. And you have your presentation or your performance. And then the awards are given. The girls can also include sharing a few things they did, along, they did to earn the award or things they've done along the year. They can share some songs together or reading or a poem. Girls can use music apps to create background music for one of the songs that they sing. And you have a closing. The closing can include a song, a friendship squeeze, or whatever the girls decide. After the girls have participated in a few ceremonies, they will be ready to help create their very own. Be sure to let everyone know this concludes our ceremony and thank everyone for attending. Again, end with a virtual dance party to celebrate. What other ideas come to mind for a virtual Court of Awards ceremony for you? Oh, I see. Cindy says, they're hosting online meetings using Facebook Messenger for kids. My co-leader's daughter calls all the girls in to the meeting so that other parents don't have to worry. That's fantastic. Thank you, Cindy. I uh, am using um, Messenger for kids with my great nieces. It's a special time when a Girl Scout graduates from one program level to, level to the another. This translation, this translation, this transition, excuse me, is to the next level in Girl Scouting called Bridging. It's an opportunity to progress as well as experience more adventures with your troop, learn new skills, and seek new challenges. She's growing and developing to new heights. Celebrating this change should be fun, personalized, and memorable for everyone involved. And most of all, it should be designed by the girls in true partnership with the adults. Bridging ceremonies usually take place at the beginning or the end of a Girl Scout year and have three parts, three main parts, your opening, your main select section, and your closing. Each of the ceremony parts offers plenty of room for the girls to be creative 
and use their individuality. They can choose a song or two to sing, a poem to read, and awards to present. But remember, the ceremony should always focus on paying tribute to Girl Scouts as they move forward. It's important to know that all Girl Scouts bridge when they move from one program level to the next. The bridge patch, on the other hand, is an earned award. You can find the requirements to earn the award in the Girl Scout Girls Guide to Girl Scouting, but I bet if you Google it, you'll find the requirements there too. Bridging can take place in all sorts of ways, from crossing over a bridge, small or large, stepping across large stones, or walking through an archway. Help the girls to plan their very own bridge or archway at their home. During your virtual ceremony, have each girl cross over with her family, one by one as everyone else watches from their screens, and then of course cheers and congratulates each girl as she has crossed. Maybe you would like to invite a troop from the next program level to join you on your virtual ceremony to receive the girls to the next level. Coordinate ahead of time with the other troop leaders and the girls' families to make the event memorable and fun for everyone. Perhaps ask the families to serve a refreshment treat with their girl after the ceremony ends. Some ideas that come to mind are asking her family to create an arch just like the one in this picture. Or take a family walk across a bridge in town and have the girls cross the bridge halfway. Uh, uh, one girl, I didn't mean all the girls. <laughs> one of her family members can be on the bridge to greet her and present her with her new, new Girl Scout pin or any of the awards that she has earned. A no-contact bridging event is in your car is crossing over a bridge. That'll work. Remember, the bridge is symbolic. And, of course, end with a virtual dance party to celebrate. Can you think of any other ways that the girls can walk through over under that bridge? She can even create a bridge using chairs. Amanda says girls could create a bridge with their arms so that it links up across all their cameras into a bridge shape and have the leader take a screenshot. Representing the unbroken chain of friendship among Girl Scouts and Girl Guides around the world, the Friendship Circle involves Girl Scouts standing in a circle, crossing their right arms over their left, and clasping hands with their friends on both sides. Everyone then makes a silent wish as a friendship squeezes past from one hand around the circle, one hand to another hand. Often the song Make New Friends is sung while the squeeze makes its way around the circle. The friendship squeeze is often used in a closing ceremony or to end a troop meeting. You can still share in the symbolism of the friendship circle and the friendship squeeze while not actually touching one another. You can ask the girls on the count of three to all give a high five in the air, to the left, to the right, up high, down low, or ask them all to cross their arms across their chest with their hands in a fist and pat their chest two times. This is the sign for a hug in American Sign Language. Be sure to capture the moment with a screenshot or take a photo. It's important to remember that there are no right or wrong ways to conducting your ceremonies. As Juliet Lowe reminds us, ask the girls. Assist them with thinking outside the box and using their resources. We are always amazed with the ideas that they come up with. Whatever the ceremony, the most important thing is to help the girls in making it their own and to assist with making it meaningful and memorable. Even though you may not be together in person, you are together, and they will never forget how meaningful the ceremony was and how their Girl Scout leader helped them to make it happen. Take another moment here just to see if there's any questions or comments. We'd love to hear your ideas. If anything came to mind, if you had an aha moment. Hi, Sarah from Belmont. Come on back anytime and share what you're doing with your girls and uh, what ceremonies or meetings that you've been having. We'd love to hear, hear them all. 
Be sure to check often the Girl Scouts of the Green and White Mountains website for our virtual programs and for council updates, as well as the Girl Scouts of the Green and White Mountains Facebook on our <laughs> live sessions on various topics and fun activities. Come back and visit us for noontime knowledge and other live events. Michelle will be with us this Wednesday to present on Badge Work at Home Part 2. And as always, let us know what topics you want us, you would like us to cover. I just want to say thank you and that you are doing a wonderful job stepping in and providing the most amazing experience for the girls. While being faced with adversity, you have stepped it up, not only caring for your families at home and each other, but also caring for your communities. Girl Scouts all across our country are stepping in and filling needs left and right with food drives, sewing masks, writing letters and cards for residents at nursing homes, donating thousands of boxes of cookies to first responders, nurses, medical teams, and participating in celebrations in drive-by parades. We cannot thank you enough for being such an amazing Girl Scout leader and volunteer. Remember that you can always reach us by phone at 888-474-9686 or by emailing customer care if you have any questions or to share your pictures, the wonderful stories of your girls giving to their communities. Tell us about their virtual troop meetings and their ceremonies. I want to wish you well. Be safe and have a memorable and meaningful day.